good. So yeah, guys, uh, talking to Jess, uh, Josh here, he reminded me of an analogy that I made last time when I was just discussing with him um, that could help us bring this to light and potentially share it with our members if there is concerns. Um, and that is that we had one of the most uh, one of the most fit women on the planet get injured as we all watched her in the CrossFit Games. And then, of course, that's going to say, well, is this right and, and should we not question it? Uh, and my uh, rebuttal to that was, this is a sport. These are the most athletic athletes on the planet. And it was the 13th workout, I believe. So she was under extreme fatigue and or duress and or we don't know what her previous history with the movement was. Maybe she, you know, maybe she had something going on. She was a volleyball player, had an ankle injury when she was young. We don't know her previous history and we don't know what led her to be injured uh, at that instance at the games. But what we do know is this, there's injuries all the time in sports and CrossFit at that level is absolutely a sport. These people are full time, they're training, they're basically professionals and you can't avoid injury in professional sport. I had said to Josh and to the class the day I spoke uh, to this, if, if we were to look at the incident of ACL injury in soccer players, professional soccer players, or recreational, but let's, let's say professional because we're comparing it to CrossFit as a sport, and we said, oh my God, another girl or guy blew his ACL, um, and every time something like that happened, we went, okay, well, we gotta look at the sport of soccer and why we're getting these injuries and consider that we shouldn't be doing soccer because it causes ACL injuries. We could do this with every sport. There's injuries in all sorts of sports, and because there's injury doesn't mean that we should say that we shouldn't be doing this, but what, it, but what we do need to do is look at potentially why it's happening. And again, I think we addressed that in the first part of the video where we said, let's make sure that we're addressing it appropriately, scaling it appropriately, uh, and introducing it appropriately to the athlete, depending on their experience, their strength, and so on. But it doesn't mean that we exclude it. Um, uh, further to that injury, there was another point I was gonna make there. Sorry, and I'm not remembering. What was the other thing you wanted me to say there, Josh? Um, injury. It's, it's, under, it's under scrutiny. It's oh, a new yeah. sport compared to other sports. Yeah, just, uh, well, oh, that, that's what it was. Sorry, I remember what my point was now. What I think is amazing about CrossFit is when we notice that there's something potentially causing an issue in our sport, CrossFit's actually really open about it. We're one of the first to say, hey, yeah, like you can get rhabdo from doing CrossFit. So rhabdo's not something that was new when CrossFit came around. All sorts of athletes experienced rhabdo in other sports prior to CrossFit, uh, but nobody really talked about it. I'd never heard of it until CrossFit came on. So a few athletes experienced it, and then CrossFit went, whoa, what's this thing that's going on? Oh, it's this breakdown of muscle tissue. Wow, it's happened before, but we want to educate people. We want to talk about it, and we do it in our intro. We do it in our foundations, and we talk to people about muscle soreness and the difference between being sore and when you might have rhabdo, and we address it, and we try to be... Uh, conscious of it, educate people, and then be safe with knowledge around it. So I actually think that CrossFit's very responsible in what it is that they do, and yet sometimes they get criticized. So guaranteed, there's gonna be some criticism around this athlete uh, blowing her Achilles at the CrossFit Games, and yet what CrossFit will do, and what I think we're doing right now, is we look at it and go, oh, hey, cool, what happened here? What can we do to avoid this? Why did this happen? And what is our responsibility to educate ourselves and to allow ourselves to perform these movements safe, more safely, for our members. Again, I believe in the movement, but definitely this was an opportunity for us to look at it and go, hey, there's some things that we should maybe consider or learn about this, and that's what we're doing. So, um, again, we're gonna do the movement, and we're gonna be more educated about it, uh, and we're gonna do it safely so that we continue here at CFC to uh, be able to do box jumps and rebounding box jumps and continue without incident or injury. Okay, that's all, that's part two. Now, thanks guys, talk to you later.